Welcome back to Arise and Shine, and thanks for waking up with us. Facts and speculation continue to unfold about the Sony hacking controversy. Internet scam expert Davin Rosenblatt is joining us to discuss the latest information and what may happen from here. Welcome back, Davin. We had you on the show a few weeks ago. It's great to see you again. Great to see you too, Priya. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So tell me, first of all, you know, we were just talking about this during the commercial, that it's so fascinating that a movie got, has gotten the president involved. It's become an international scandal. Do you believe that North Korea was behind the Sony hack? Well, I mean, I don't have all the information as nobody does. But <laughs> when, when, it, when the story broke and from what I've seen since then, I don't believe it is North Korea because it just doesn't reek of the way North Korea acts. Usually when North Korea acts, they do, they do provocative things like they right. fire missiles into the Sea of Japan. They do do that, yes. <laughs> they, they threaten South Korea. Right. They're very braggadocious. When they do something, they want everybody to know, right. hey, look at me. They denied this. Mm -hmm. they, they said it was a righteous deed, right. but they said this wasn't us. And also, if you're hacking into Sony, mm -hmm. you have a certain level of sophistication. Right. You can hide where you are. And why would you have it traced back to you if you are North Korea and you don't want to accept responsibility. Okay, that's a fair point, but to play devil's advocate, President Obama and the FBI have said that it was North Korea that was behind the hack and, you know, just yesterday the United States imposed further sanctions on North Korea citing this incident as one of the reasons for doing that because they said that North Korea is trying to, you know, limit the freedom of expression and the freedom of creativity here in the United States. Um, I mean, what would do you think that's legitimate? <laughs> I mean, well, if you wanted to be a puppet master, since we, since it's very possible it's not North Korea, then you're getting exactly what you want geopolitically. If you wanted to escalate tensions between the United States and North Korea, then you've done it, and you're playing right into their hands. Right. I mean, how really, how often is it that our government and our president is very forthright with uh, information? Yeah, I was, well... I mean, that's that's a fair point. And I know, you know, I think you had said before that it took so long, what, years and years for the CIA terror reports to come out. Yet in this situation, it seemed like they figured it out like that. But what do you think about the fact that President Obama has gotten involved in a movie with Seth Rogen and has publicly come out and said that North Korea did this? I only wish uh, President Obama would have gotten involved in the 90s when Paulie Shore was making movies. I mean, it's, it's kind of absurd right. to think about that. We're having press conferences conferences over a movie, over a comedy. Right. Uh, I, I, just, I just don't buy it. But it is, he is doing the right thing if he thinks that the world economy, mm -hmm. the big players in the world are going to be nervous about this because we can't keep each other secure. We can't keep our uh, corporations secure, our banks secure. It, is, it does make sense for him to say, hey, we got this. We know who's doing this, and right. we're going to get them. It's just not usually the way President Obama operates, though. He's usually a lot more close to the vest. Right. So it might be absurd that President Obama came out and commented about a Hollywood movie, but let's talk about your area of expertise, which is the Internet. Some people might think it's absurd that Sony was able to get hacked at the magnitude that this has happened. I mean... Do you think that's absurd? Uh, well, first of all, Sony was warned. Right. Th their uh, internet security company said, listen, you need to upgrade your security. And like a lot of large entities, whether they be corporations or countries, they didn't heed the warning. I mean, if you look back to our history, on 9-11, we had plenty of warnings right. that there was going to be a terrorist action with planes. Mm -hmm. We didn't act. We right. didn't secure ourselves. You never heard of warnings. They didn't beef up security, at least not that anybody going to the airport could say. Right. The thing is, you're secure until you're not secure. So Sony learned that lesson. And we're right. every day, every week, I should say, we're getting all these uh, apologies, whether it be from Walmart or Chase or Target. They're getting hacked. It's just going to keep on happening. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize how vulnerable they are until something happens, as you kind of mentioned. But I also want to talk about a lot of people are throwing out this word, and it's been talked about a lot, cyber terrorism. Mm -hmm. Do you think this was an act of cyber terrorism? To me, and maybe it's because I live in New York, when I think of terrorism, I think think of mass casualties. I, I think of loss of life. Right. It's cyber blackmail. I mean, but some people could say that this really um, invoked a lot of fear and panic across the country. Who was afraid? Were you afraid? Um, I was afraid. Who, I don't know anybody but, who was afraid right. of, uh, you know, maybe of, of spending $15 on a Seth Rogen film. Maybe that's what they were afraid <laughs> of. I don't know anybody who was afraid of the Sony hacking situation. Okay. The movie theaters were afraid, and they, they made a smart business decision. Well, that's what, yeah, I mean, they decided to pull the film from theaters. Do you think that was the right move for them to do? For them, uh, yes, because God for, if you re did release the movie on Christmas Day, and God forbid some nut job did do something 
on your property, you would get sued, and you're going to get sued anyway, right. but you would lose everything. Now, there were independent theaters that released the movie, yeah. and Sony did release the movie on the internet, so it wasn't really Sony got bullied. It was these theater chains, and right. I, it was a good business decision. That being said, let's, let's, no disrespect to Mr. Rogan and Mr. Franco, the movie probably would have made 30 or $40 million that weekend, which is a good take. Right. If it was the Star Wars movie coming out next December, do you really think the movie chains would have pulled it? That's yeah, that's a tough question because that's a you know blockbuster going to roll in what hundreds of millions. Hundreds of, dollars. of million dollars. What's going to happen if that were to happen? You would see metal detectors and people having to take off their storm stormtrooper outfits. Right. Well, so let's talk about the internet again because basically almost everyone does their business online. People do banking online, right? I mean, how are we? If if this could happen to Sony, how are we supposed to stay safe online? Well, I mean, individually, first of all, we're, most of us are not targets the way a big corporation are. Most of us are not important for big time hacking operations. That being said, you know, constantly change your passwords. Mm -hmm. You want to you make have a, a very tough password, so that would be with uppercase and lowercase, numbers, symbols, like dollar signs. But then signs. it's so hard to remember. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard to remember. <laughs> I'm always, like, writing my passwords into my phone because I'm constantly forgetting. I change my passwords, like, every three days, mainly because I can't remember them. Well, that's not really good that you can't remember. <laughs> but you know what? Just go old school. Write it on a piece of paper. Stick it in, a, in right. your nightstand or on, in a piece of paper underneath yeah. your, uh, your shirts or whatever. Put, put it there and write Write it down and cross it up. Because if you put it online, say you say you do change it all the time, right. but then you put it in your email account. Yeah. Well, if your email gets account, uh, gets hacked, then you've just made yourself vulnerable. Right. But that's really all you can do. And if you're doing a commerce online, whether if you're buying things on eBay or, or your bank, make sure you're doing it from a secure network. It's not something you want to do in a cafe or in a hotel or hotel lobby. You really right. want to do that at home. <laughs> People do it, that though. That sounds like the beginning of a song. You don't want to do that in a hotel lobby. I don't know. Are you worried that, are you worried that um, more hackings could happen? Am I worried about? No, I, I mean, do you think that, like, given the fact that this could happen to such a major, you know, entity like Sony, um, could this happen to other large corporations well, as like, well? Like we just discussed, it, yeah. it happens all the time. I expect it to happen. Here's what, here's the, what the problem is. The technology has outpaced the security. Mm -hmm. And that happens all the time. Look at the Industrial Revolution. We right. had all these factories and these machines and we were making all these wonderful textiles and everything. Unfortunately, people were also losing limbs, getting maimed, and dying because we didn't have the safety and the security precautions right. in place. It's the same thing. Yeah. E-commerce is very convenient. Do you want? Do you want to give up uh, ordering things online? Do you want no, to give that I up? I love it. I'm so lazy. I love ordering. Things but that's online. what. But that's what. <laughs> that's what part of being in the West is. Right. Being able to have this convenience. Absolutely. And, and most people don't want to give that up. Well, another thing I need to ask about is that you know a lot of people have said that hey maybe this was a publicity stunt um, you know to get people to watch the movie right because it's obviously created so much hype. Do you think it could have been a publicity stunt? Listen, why, if you're going to do a publicity stunt, why would you do it for Christmas weekend? Mm -hmm. That's a big movie weekend. Right. People are going to go to the movies. Anyway. People are going to go to the movies. This movie was going to do well. They've made, a, they've made I think today, last I, saw, I read was $15 million. Mm -hmm. They would have made a lot more on this. And now, so? okay. and now they've already gone right onto demand and pay-per-view. They were going to do that anyway. They would have right. gotten those sales in six months anyway. Right. It doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. From two, and remember, this hacking was not all just about this movie. Right. You had all these workers at Sony who had their personal information released. Yep. Yeah, that's true. You had um, derogatory things about the President of the United States released, which if you were in North Korea, that kind of does make sense. Right. But uh, it, 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 it wasn't really about this movie. Before it was about the movie, you had medical records of people who we never know who worked at Sony. Right. Yeah. No, that, that's a great point. So after all this is said, have you actually seen the movie? <laughs> I have not seen the movie yet. And uh, is there, are you boycotting it for a reason? Or? No, I wouldn't, no. I, I'm, I'm not that motivated one way or the other about Seth Rogen. Right. I'll, I'll see the movie. Eventually, uh, I, yeah. I'll see the movie probably when it comes on cable. I pay, uh -huh. I pay enough for that. <laughs> and I'll see it then, and I'm sure, I'm sure it's a fine movie. Yeah, you know what's interesting? I don't think I would have ever gone to the theaters to watch it, but now that it's created this international scandal, I am intrigued. So if this was a publicity stunt, it obviously worked on me. But, but after, how, how intrigued are you? Are you going to go later on this weekend? Uh, no. I mean, I mean, yeah, it'll probably be one of those things where if I have some spare time, then maybe I'll, you know, you catch a nice matinee, there. you have an afternoon, you go see a Seth Rogen movie. But you know what's good about all of this is that it has created some dialogue about how to keep ourselves safe on the internet. So in your opinion, what's the takeaway in all of this? The takeaway is, listen, none of us are really 
secure. I mean, we all like to think we're secure. Right. We like to think if we send our emails and our texts, everything's okay if we hit delete. The fact of the matter is, even if you hit delete, there's still a footprint. Right. So all we can do is protect ourselves, like we talked about with the passwords mm -hmm. and being secure. But if you really don't want anybody to know what you're up to, don't put it online. Don't text it. If you have something nasty to say about somebody, whisper it in their ear. Say it to their face. Say it. Well, <laughs> well, if you, well yeah, but then do it from a distance because right. if they're bigger than you, you got to like <laughs> say it and run. Right, right, right. Well, no, I think it's good and it's important to keep those things in mind. So thank you, Davin. It'll be interesting to see how this story continues to develop. To tune into Davin's radio show and hear him take down internet scammers, go to davinsden.com.